We hosted a luncheon in a Senate hearing room, and several of our congressional advisors dropped by. Among them was a young Senator Al Gore, shown here with our first chairman, David Carpenter, and John Hines, a Republican senator from Pennsylvania who was chairman of the Senate Special Committee on Aging. We then set out to make the alliance known by hosting a series of significant and well-attended public meetings. One of the first set out to show how advanced technologies would soon enlarge possibilities for active, independent living for older people. We put on quite a show at Epcot Center at Walt Disney World. Sketches of the future as imagined in our program materials in 1986 included a satellite dish, beakers, a robotic arm, a VHS recorder, and a car that could have belonged to the Jetsons. Our goal was to portray how technologies in the near future would link together housing, health care, transportation, communications and entertainment, all enhancing the ability of older people to remain active and independent in their own homes and communities. We didn't quite have the language for it in 1986, but as it turned out, we were describing the coming digital technology revolution. Even if our representation of a technological cornucopia was a bit short-sighted, the gathering at Disney World was a great success. U.S. Surgeon General Dr. C. Everett Koop was our big draw, and Age Wave entrepreneur Ken Dykewald, as always, was a big hit. We followed the Florida meeting with one in California, bringing the great champion of America's seniors, Congressman Claude Pepper, with us. We hosted a luncheon in the courtyard of the Ethel Percy Andrus Center on Aging at the University of Southern California. Also in our early years, the Alliance encountered Dr. Norman G. Anderson, a veteran of big science projects at Oak Ridge and Argonne National Laboratories. Dr. Anderson argued that to keep our bodies functioning in the face of assaults of nature, diseases, and aging, we need to assemble a precise parts list for humans down to the molecular level. When we learned that a Senate committee was taking testimony on possible big science projects, I asked Dr. Anderson if he would report on behalf of the Alliance for Aging Research that a catalog of molecular parts could be the key to engineering healthier aging. Days later, a story in the Washington Post revealed that one of the senators who heard Dr. Anderson had plans to pump federal monies into something called the Human Genome Project. So the Alliance had an early role at the beginning of the biggest human biology project of the last century. We persuaded the American Medical Association to co-host a conference in Washington on the medical benefits of sequencing the entire range of human genes and learning their relationship to diseases and to aging itself. We attracted a distinguished group, including Dr. Leroy Hood, who invented the machinery for sequencing human genes, Dr. James Watson, co-discoverer of the structure of DNA, and Britain's Sidney Brenner. By bringing forward Nobel-level scientists, the Alliance was fast making a name for itself as a source for what matters in the science and policy of aging and aging research. We learned that a major article was to be published in the Journal of the American Medical Association. The article looked ahead to huge future increases in health costs if incidence and duration of age-related disabilities did not change. The authors were Dr. Edward Schneider, a member of the Alliance's Science Advisory Board, and Dr. Jack Goralnik of the National Institute on Aging. To generate attention, we organized a press conference in the U.S. Capitol. Among our speakers was Joseph Califano, a former LBJ Cabinet Secretary for Health. Together with Claude Pepper, Dr. Bob Butler, and Senator Tom Harkin, chair of the important Senate Appropriations Committee, the following morning our speakers appeared on the Today Show on NBC. As a result of the attention we generated, Senator Harkin and Representative Ed Roybal were able to push through an increase of 35% in the budget of the National Institute on Aging. A year later, the NIA budget went up another 18%. Harkin and Roybal also enacted legislation drafted by the Alliance, creating Claude Pepper Older Americans Independence Centers in major universities and medical schools across the country. These early successes brought us positive attention from some of the nation's leading news organizations. By the 1990s, the broad field of research in human aging was picking up respectability and momentum. 
This evolution was aided by an Institute of Medicine project commissioned by major foundations, including the Commonwealth Fund, based in New York City. The project's goal was to review the current state of aging research and to propose a national agenda to pursue progress with potential to improve the lives of aging Americans. Margaret Mahoney, president of the Commonwealth Fund and a member of the Alliance Board, provided support for us to draw attention to the report and its recommendations. Margaret Mahoney and the Commonwealth Fund also tapped the Alliance to devise a strategy for bolstering the nation's supply of academic geriatricians to help meet the medical needs of America's swelling tide of older patients needing professional care. This assignment led directly to the establishment of the Center on Aging at the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine and ultimately blended into the creation of the Paul Beeson Career Development Award in Aging Research. That program today is supported by a number of foundations and the NIA and has advanced the careers of more than 200 academic leaders in geriatric teaching, research, and practice. In 1992, we began hosting our annual Bipartisan Congressional Awards Dinner in the nation's capital. We honored Democratic Senator Jay Rockefeller, who had pressed the Pepper Commission on Aging Policy to include a stretch goal for medical research. And we honored Republican Senator Pete Domenici for his leadership in launching the Human Genome Initiative and for improved mental health services. That night, we also saluted Dr. Lewis Sullivan, the influential Secretary of Health and Human Services in the administration of President George H.W. Bush. 